Near the equator, between the Java Sea and the Indian Ocean, only a night's voyage from Singapore, lies the enchanted island of Bali, gem of the Dutch East Indies, formed of seven volcanic peaks, at the base of which nestle innumerable little villages of small palm-thatched houses. Over a million people live in this tropical paradise. Their civilization and religion are very old. Ancient Hindu temples and shrines of fantastic architecture symbolize a creed that has come down through the centuries. Elaborate and grotesque carving challenge the imagination. Temple gates of ornate design that have watched generations come and go. Everywhere on the terraced hills and in the valleys are seen the workers and their water buffaloes tending the rice crop. Rice is a principal food. It is gathered into sheaves like wheat. The women do the harvesting, for true to the traditions of the tropics, the men shun work. The sheaves are dried in the sun and the rice grains threshed free from the stems. In a primitive but efficient way, the rice is pounded and with an untiring rhythm, the girls keep up the work hour after hour without fatigue. Market days are busy days, and long journeys over rough and winding roads bring the people to the village square. Into town they come from miles around. Everyone is happy, and gay chatter echoes along the way. The men prefer to ride on the ox cart. It's certainly easier than walking with weighted head. Why should they work anyway, with plenty of sturdy women folk about? From childhood, the women learn to balance head loads and thus develop beautiful, firm bodies and a graceful gait. They are poetry in motion as they move. Ducks can travel on their own feet, and as their eggs and meat find a ready market at a good price, the man of the house drives in the flock himself. Long treks under the shading mangrove and banyan trees, and finally the village is reached. The market square is a bustling, crowded place where produce and handwork are bartered and sold. The wants of the people are simple, and so are their luxuries, too. Prepared delicacies such as rice cakes with sugar syrup or fried duck are in big demand. Colorful sarongs can be had for a piece or two of native hand carving. There is no poverty here, no beggars in this land of plenty. Beetle nuts wrapped with lime in a large fragrant leaf are a stimulating confection, but they do stain the teeth and lips a vivid red. Cockfighting is a native sport and affords a chance for the men to gamble. While the women are busy in the market, they match their sharp spurred game cocks and wager their purses on the fight as the feathers fly. At the end of the day, Renang counts her meager coins and wonders what she buys is half as precious as the things she sells. Everyone in Bali is an artisan of some sort, making both useful and artistic pottery. With clever fingers, the girls shape into lovely lines the soft clay. Their methods are primitive, but the results show that they are real artists. They do not even use the age-old potter's wheel, but depend on the skill of their eyes and hands as they perpetuate design and contours of an ancient civilization. Religion influences everything that is done in Bali. It takes four men to lift these heavy towering bantans onto the heads of the girls who walk with them to the village temple, sometimes miles away. Great piles of fruits and flowers, rice cakes and sweetmeats in colorful arrangements, offerings to appease the appetite of the Hindu gods. The young girls balance them skillfully and walk seemingly with little effort in the sacred journey to the temple where they are to be left for the nocturnal feast of the hungry gods. It is the belief that well-fed gods are kind, and so along the roads on appointed days is the parade of girls balancing the high and heavy pyramids. Lithe bronze bodies in graceful motion of which a sculptor might well dream. From the temple tower, the priests call the people. And from all the countryside come the women and the girls with offerings. There is an elaborate array of rare assortments, generous offering of a land of plenty.
Surely the gods will be pleased with this profuse expression of a devout people, and the ritual begins. <laughs> The priest chants his incantation, and fragrant incense rises before the altar. The gods will feast tonight, and so will the people. The elaborate ceremonies of cremation are festival. In this happy land there is no grief, for the belief is that the souls of the departed are reincarnated and live again in higher castes. The long ceremonies are occasions of great gatherings. The elaborate caskets of fantastic design pass through the streets in a picturesque procession as the people pay homage. In the temple gardens live the sacred monkeys. They are tended and fed by young girls, and no harm comes to them. But they are only monkeys just the same, like their brothers in a zoo. The people gather on the temple ground, for today the witch will dance and the good spirits and the bad spirits fight as they have for centuries. The fantastic masks and costumes of the symbolic pageant are taken from the temple and each actor plays a part. Dancing girls enter the temple square with costumes heavier than themselves and to the weird cadence of the gamelan orchestra, the mask drama of Jenga begins. In the strange fabled story, the witch is a principal character with her hag-like mask and disheveled hair. The bad spirits take the stage and threaten the peace of the living and the souls of the dead. Barong the lion is a ferocious creature and he threatens the evil witch. His fierce growling countenance challenges and his strong jaws snap. The struggle of good and evil is underway. And the theme of accompanying music catches the mood of the traditional posturing of the dance drama. The bad spirits seem victorious and in fantastic pantomime excite the watching crowds. But the good spirits enter and bravely contend. Evil is overpowered, disease and famine conquered. The witch dance is over and a happy people cheer. The occasion is one for hilarious celebration and the ligong dance begins. Strange rhythm of trained bodies, elaborate costumes and headdresses, exotic music, mystic movements, fluttering fans. Sayu, the little market girl, wistfully watches, for only the high caste girls can dance. The young girls become figures in a moving pantomime of joy to the rattle of shrill notes and rumbling drums. Yes, the Balinese are a strange people, and their ceremonies and dances are elaborate and symbolic of a civilization ages old. People of other lands envy these happy natives, living in a tropical splendor, still untouched by the worries of a troubled world. Tomorrow, under waving palms, they will sing and dance again. 